In general chemistry, there are two main types of compounds that we will discuss. These are molecular compounds and ionic compounds. So a compound is where we have placed two more elements in a definite ratio with each other. And this is more than just the singular elements that we've talked about. And now we're beginning to combine elements together to form more complex species. So the compound itself can be molecular ionic. And we're going to find out that the primary difference between these two is the types of bonds that are, occur inside of here. So as we go along with this course, we will talk about what are the differences inside the molecules themselves that cause something to be molecular and ionic. But right now, we just need to define it. Compounds are made up of atoms that are held together by chemical bonds. And that's really the main difference between molecular and ionic compounds is the type of bonds that are inside of there. So ionic bonds occur between a metal and a nonmetal. So we've previously discussed what is the difference between metals and nonmetals. Remember, that's relative to their position on the periodic table. Ionic bonds are different in that they involve the transfer of electrons. But whenever I see a compound, if I see a metal and nonmetal combined, typically it's going to contain ionic bonds, and then it's also going to be an ionic compound. The ionic bond forms with the transfer of electrons. And when the electron transfers, what we end up doing is making a positively charged species and a negatively charged species. And those two species are held together by electrostatic forces. And that's basically what we call an ionic bond. So in a compound, if we have a metal and a non-metal combined, they typically will form ionic bonds. And that's what we define as being an ionic compound. So the classic species is NaCl. So Na is on the left-hand side of the periodic table, a metal. Chlorine's on the right-hand side of the periodic table, a nonmetal. So we would expect there to be ionic bonds. The other type of bond that we will spend quite a bit of time talking about are called covalent bonds. And this is where the two elements inside of the compound are bonded together by sharing electrons. And this tends to occur when we're dealing with two nonmetals. So nonmetals are that small area in the upper right-hand corner of the periodic table. So not a lot of elements can actually be involved in covalent bonding. So when we see two nonmetals bonded together, the electrons are being shared in a covalent bond, and these tend to form molecular compounds. So that's the main difference between molecular compounds and ionic compounds is the type of bonds. Um, ionic compounds have ionic bonds. Molecular compounds have covalent bonds. So molecular compounds are a little bit different because we're not sharing an electron, so we're not forming positive and negatively charged species. So they're actually electrically neutral. And so they're being held together by a different force that we will uh, talk about. But for right now, one of the skills that you need to be able to develop in going through general chemistry is if you see a molecule, you should be able to tell me, is it ionic or molecular? And in that sense, you can tell me you expect to see ionic bonds or covalent bonds. So this first one, CCL4, we have carbon and chlorine bonded together into a compound. I go to the, my periodic table. Carbon is in the upper right-hand corner. Chlorine is kind of all the way to the right. So these are both termed nonmetals. A nonmetal bonded to a nonmetal is a molecular compound. FeCl3. So Fe is a transition metal, but it's still considered a metal. It's in the center of the periodic table. Chlorine is all, all the way to the right, or almost all the way to the right in the periodic table. It's a nonmetal. So a metal bonded to a nonmetal, we would expect FeCl3 to have ionic bonds and be an ionic compound. We've already talked about NaCl. So Na is to the left of the periodic table. Cl is to the right. Sodium, Na is a metal. Chlorine is a nonmetal. So we would expect this to be an ionic compound. We would expect it to have ionic bond in there. So PCl3, phosphorus is sort of to the up and right in the periodic table. Same thing with chlorine. It's all the way to the right. These are two nonmetals bonded together. We would expect this molecule to be held together with covalent bonds, and we would expect this to be a molecular compound. 